before you came round. My heart would never be much faster. Hey everyone, it's Megan, and today I'm going to be doing a video all about Poshmark. As you guys know, I've primarily been an eBay seller for the last two and a half years, and I decided to start cross-posting a lot of items at the beginning of January onto Poshmark. They started adding a lot of new features that uh, made it a lot easier for me to list and cross-list my inventory on both platforms, and I started taking it a lot more seriously and utilizing it, and um, one of the main reasons I did start cross-posting a lot is because there is no listing fees. So you're really not risking anything by cross-posting. You don't really have any fees unless you sell something. So I kind of just wanted to break down my net sales over the last seven months, how much I've made. I'll put uh, some numbers on the screen, what my gross numbers were and what my net sales were. And of course, this isn't deducting my cost of goods. That's going to be different for everyone. As you guys know, I'm primarily a Goodwill outlet shopper, bin shopper. So my profit margins are very, very good. That is about where I source 95% of my inventory. And yeah, so I guess in a way I'm gonna be also comparing Poshmark to eBay. Um, kinda what the benefits are to Poshmark and how I felt about it um, since I've been selling on there in the last six months. So I have them written down here. Um, so in January, uh, my net sales were $117. In February, my net sales were $289. March, my net sales were $283. April, my net sales were $514. May, it shot up a lot because I started cross-posting a lot more. Uh, my net sales were $1,083. And June, it went down a little bit to $810 net sales. And then July, I sold a net sale of $1,333. And I'll also post um, on the screen how many items I sold each month. Um, I do have a bookkeeping system that I am going to be doing a video about uh, later today. So hopefully I'll get that up within the next few days. I do think it's important to keep track of your own bookkeeping. Um, for eBay, I do all GoDaddy and eBay, I mean Poshmark since it's so easy and the fees are super simple. I think it's really easy to just use like Google Spreadsheets to document your own um, profits and just keeping up with it every week. It takes me like less than five minutes to do. So. Um, one, like I said at the beginning of this video, the main reason I started selling on Poshmark because there was no listing fees, which is amazing. As you guys know, if you are an eBay seller, it does cost a lot of money, a decent amount of money to sell on eBay, whether you have a store or you don't have a store. I think they give you 50 free listings to begin with, and then after that, you either have to buy a store if you want to save a little bit more money, or just pay, I think it's 30 cents. Um, after you use your free listings. Um, so also another thing with Poshmark is if you notice if you Google anything, um, clothing related at least, Poshmark shows up a ton in Google search and that's something I definitely want to take advantage of. Obviously, you know, used clothing is a very saturated market and I want as many eyes on my item as possible. And I don't know if they will show up in Google forever. I definitely think Poshmark is paying a lot of money to show up um, first in Google. And they're definitely trying to grow their platform and get a lot more users on it. So for me, not only am I cross-posting it to Poshmark and people are seeing it on Poshmark, but it's also being seen on Google. And another thing that I'm utilizing with Poshmark is a Pinterest business profile. So it's kind of like an auto share thing. I created a business um, account on Pinterest and it actually does show you a lot of data, which I was really impressed by. It is free. It tells you um, your monthly impressions. Right now I have almost, um, I think almost 6,000 impressions a month. Now, does that all convert to sales? Not necessarily, but once you cross post something to Pinterest, it kind of stays there forever. So even if the item sells, 
they're able to click on the item and then go directly to my store and maybe find something else that they might really like. So that is one of the main reasons I've been selling on Poshmark recently. To me, unlike eBay, Poshmark doesn't really feel like work because the listing process is so simple. Um, you know, it is a very like social app and it kind of definitely reminds me of like Instagram shopping uh, through someone's personal closet and I've also since I started selling on there been shopping a lot more and you can find so many great deals of really great brands that you probably wouldn't necessarily normally find on eBay I think since Poshmark is really easy to use and there is no listing fees up front and things like that I do think it's a lot easier for people just getting rid of their stuff um, you know, especially people that are a lot more wealthy who maybe don't want to be seen in something more than once. They'll just take like a quick snapshot on their bed or on their door and quickly post it and don't necessarily want full, um, like resale value of the item. They just want to make like a quick $30, $40 and it could be a really good brand. So I think it's a great way to find a lot of good deals. And one of the last things I want to touch on, because I am going to do a couple more videos um, about my Poshmark routine, and I'm going to start doing somewhat sold videos on there since I am selling a lot more on there now. One other great thing I really like about Poshmark is the hassle-free shipping on my end. It's not technically free, but I never actually have to deal with any of the shipping money. The customer pays Poshmark and I'm just getting sent a label, so it really simplifies that process for me, unlike eBay where I'm individually weighing each item, the cost obviously varies for me and eBay also takes a percentage of the shipping that you charge. So it's really nice that they have that flat rate for anything that's up to five pounds. It's actually really hard for me personally. I only hit that five pound limit maybe one time because someone bought multiple items from me and a lot of them were sweaters. But other than that, it's kind of you know, stress-free, you can use, um, I know they announced a couple months ago that you can use any priority box, they're not limited on which one you can use, um, you can order them through USPS.com, I get boxes sent to my house, and when I'm running low, I just make sure that I reorder so I never run out. I primarily use mostly the shoe boxes, I can fit shoes in there, I can fit clothes in there, and um, for me, just the shape of the box is the easiest to get a ton of stuff in there if someone does bulk order multiple things from me. So that is something else that I really love about Poshmark. Now as far as, um, I know Poshmark's really big on uh, following a lot of people or a lot of people like spam follow each other. I originally, when I first downloaded the app a couple years ago, I did do that. But when I did get back on the app in January, I unfollowed. Um, I think um, I've unfollowed like a thousand people a day and I'm now only following people that I actually want to see their closets because I really did want to utilize my feed more, um, support other resellers from Instagram that I really enjoy following, um, see what they're selling, share their items on a regular basis when I can see them. Um, I just didn't like um, how much my feed what just was spammed up with a ton of people. so. That was my personal choice to do that. Um, I know a lot of people, if you're following like 40,000, 50,000 people at this point, you might not want to do that. Um, but for me, uh, it's just something that I decided to do and I'm happy with it. Like I said, I can easily find my friends from Instagram and share their closet and give them some love um, when I have time to. And another quick note, I guess, on what I just mentioned, because I'm only following people that I really care about and follow on IG, I feel like it's also a really great way for me to learn brands. Um, you know, a lot of people find a lot of higher end brands, especially that are great for Poshmark, and I think by only following um, a select amount of people that are full-time resellers, it really helps me, um, again, just constantly learning and seeing what gets likes, what doesn't get likes. Um, and that's just another way I utilize that. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys in this video. I'm going to be doing a lot more Poshmark videos and I'm still going to be doing eBay videos. Um, eBay is still my main platform. Um, I still make a majority of my money on po um, eBay, but I do see it down the line becoming more 50-50. 
um, as I'm growing my Poshmark more and more, I do see a lot of potential on the app. And I do think, based on how I style my photos, things like that, that it does um, attract a certain type of buyer on Poshmark, and I feel like my items get a lot more appreciation on there versus eBay. But also, um, I've decided to, to cross post pretty much every single item that I have. At first, I was only putting a select amount of items on Poshmark to eBay, but at the end of the day, I always think that I know what's going to sell, but sometimes something will get a lot of watchers and views on eBay, and then sometimes it'll sell right away on Poshmark. You just never know um, who's going to be on the app or website at just the right time and find your item, so I just choose to utilize um, being in a saturated market to have as many eyes on my items as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I really do plan on making more videos. I plan on filming a couple after this one. Um, I hope you have a great week and I will talk to you guys in the next video.